what we're going to be doing today is practicing acrylic. When you're done with this, you're going to actually take a picture of it, put it actually on right down here on the bottom on your uh, pra practice, and then this whole formative slip will be due today. All right. So you actually do this. We're going to do a two color blend, a three color blend, sponging, short strokes, long strokes, press strokes, and layering. I'm going to, it's going to be kind of like this. And I'm going to just have it recorded and then you can paint with it, pause it, all that good stuff. All right, so this is kind of where we're going. So at this time, before I get ready to paint, everybody grab your paper. All right. First thing is we're going to label our paper. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to write a two. We're going to write a three. We're going to write sponging. I'm going fast, I know. And then we're going to write the word short. <laughs> Guys, we're being recorded, remember? Thank you. All right. So on your paper, you wrote two, three, sponging, short, long, press for a press stroke, which is actually a Chinese brush technique, and the longest one. Background, middle ground, and foreground. So this is like what it's going to look like in a few minutes. And again, these colors are the colors on my palette. They're the colors I need for my painting. So I'm not going to waste them. I'm going to get used to painting with them. All right. So currently, I've got all this ready to go. Got my paints. Now I grabbed a couple different brushes today. So you can kind of see it up here, I might adjust this, right. When I do color blending, I like to use a flat brush and we're gonna actually work with two colors. Mason, are you ready? All right. Now, um, when I look at my picture, I know I'm using yellows, I'm using golds. I could blend those two colors. Looks like I could start to maybe blend maybe some of these peachy kind of colors and stuff too, or maybe a tint of brown with a darker brown or maybe a yellow into some of these greens. So I'm really becoming aware of the colors that I actually need to mix. So the first time we're gonna do is a flat. I grabbed a flat brush. You can tell it's flat because if I pinch it like this, it's flat. And I'm gonna use some strokes. I'm gonna go from yellow and I'm gonna rinse this little brush. And while that is still wet, I want to maybe put some brown over it. So now I have two colors blended and I have a little overlapping. That's what that's about. Three colors is gonna be fun too. So again, I keep my eye on my picture and look about where I need to do some blending. I might do a yellow to a gold to a brown and maybe even orange, I could actually go for four. So this time it's gonna be different. I'm using yellow. I might use this golden color and I like to overlap it. And then it's kind of like an ombre when you're getting your blend going. And then I got my brown that goes into that. And that's three, but I'm an overachiever. I'm gonna go into some darker brown as well. So now I have like a four color blend just like that. And again, it really works really well to use a flat brush. All right. Now sponging, remember when I said rinse out your sponge and soften it up? You think, I don't even know if I'm gonna need sponging. Sponging works really good for like branches and sometimes like moss and things on rocks. So I would experiment with it. So what I did is I tapped it on my uh, palette and I tap it on my paper. And I can change colors. In fact, I'm just gonna turn this and maybe I'll just work on the edge of it and see if I like that. Or sometimes I even go over the top of it. So I like sponging. 
Uh, it's really good for fish scales. It's really good for bark on trees, mosses, leaves, all sorts of different things. All right. So I just rinsed this out so it doesn't get all crusty hard. And I'll set it here, and I might even share with my neighbors. All right. Short strokes and long strokes. Well, I'm going to go over to my palette, and I have a brown brush. And a lot of times I just like to twist it. Now remember, when you wash your brushes with acrylic, you have to use soap. All right. But short strokes. They can be like little cattails. And I can overlap different colored strokes. Maybe I'll go into some kind of golden colors too. But little tiny short strokes. Like what would I maybe need in my image? And just working with little tiny strokes. Like the branches on my tree. Oh my gosh. These would be long strokes and little short strokes. So let's talk long strokes. All right. Long strokes, I'm loading up my brush, and I'm thinking about maybe just working with different types of um, strokes that I might need, whether it's for palm trees or branches. Sometimes um, I even go like side to side a little bit and see what happens when things are really, really long. So I did like almost like a ground and even like a branch. One of my favorite is a press stroke coming up. And I can do that with all different brushes. Sometimes a variety of brushes is fun. What we're actually doing is taking our brush and pressing it so the bristles bend. So I'm gonna load it up and I go like this. They make nice little patterns. Sometimes with a little brush, I do this if I wanna make like little ferns or little daisy patterns. You can do a, a press stroke. They make really good like leaves. Oh, they make really cute leaves. So I'm just actually pressing. All right. Sometimes if you want to get super tricky and fun and it's not being wasteful, it's learning how to use your brushes, is I have a nice flight, flat brush. I might dip one side in one color and maybe the other side in other color. It's called a double dip. Maybe like an ice cream cone and press that and see what happens. Because pretty soon you can make different kinds of patterns. So it's just kind of fun to experiment. When I do my last technique, I think of Bob Ross. I like how he does his uh, little landscapes. All right. Now I could do like a sunset and I'm just gonna paint this whole thing like this. And I'm just gonna have fun with my colors. And I want background, so I got a background color right now. And if I get it on the table, I might have to wash it off because this stuff doesn't come off as easy as some of my other stuff. Maybe I'm gonna do some kind of sunset fun thing. Yeah, I'm having fun. No rules on this one, okay? I do wanna rinse my brush. And I really want to squeeze out the water this time. I want to show you how to do some little pine trees. So I have my brush here. I might look for my other little brush here. All right. It works really good if they're dry and not um, wet at all. Let me see if it's going to work. It's kind of a big brush for what I'm going to do. But I'm jumping into this brown. It might even look like a silhouette. But far away, I'm just gonna push my brush down. And I like to go side to side. And it makes like a little pine tree. Happy trees, right? And as you get to the foreground, your trees might get a little bigger. Sometimes I like to do this with greens for little pine trees. And maybe I got some dirt coming along through here. And I can actually grab more colors and maybe I have a big, big, big pine tree in the foreground. So what we're doing, ooh, that got a little goopy, is foreground, middle ground, background. And again, I'm using my flat brush to almost make a stipple kind of pattern. 
So it's good to experiment. So I got foreground, middle ground, background with happy trees. And I like happy little birds. So I'm putting some paint on my brush. And I like to do like a little V. And I got a bird. All right. So um, I do want you to experiment again with the colors that you need for your project. Whether it's this project or you're experimenting with acrylic for another project. Again, it's not enough to give these a quick rinse. You really do need to use soap. And do not waste your paints. Put, a, put these in a baggie and you can save these paints for 